Hi, I'm Nadine Thornhill, sexuality educator. I created a sex educator tag. It is a bunch of questions, and uh, I think that sex educators might have some interesting answers to these questions. Hopefully, I have some interesting answers to these questions, so let's dive right in. Uh, I guess at the beginning of all these videos, I say, hi, I'm Nadine Thornhill, sexuality educator. On my business cards and on the title card of my videos, it says Nadine Thornhill, EDD, that stands for Doctor of Education. But when I'm dealing with people, like when I'm working with people in sessions or in workshops, uh, I just go by Nadine. So, you know, if we ever meet in person, just call me Nadine. It's easy. It's my name. I use the pronouns she, her, and hers. I don't mind if people use gender neutral pronouns like they or Z to refer to me, particularly if they're not sure about um, my gender. I do not like being referred to with he, him, his. Uh, it, I think it's only happened to me once. It was when I was 15 years old. And the fact that I still remember it when I'm 42 and I still get this frustrated knot in my stomach um, gives me a tiny inkling of how frustrating it must be for folks who get misgendered on the reg. I am a cisgender woman. For those of you who don't know what that word means, it means that I was assigned female at birth and for as long as I have had um, a sense of my own gender, I have also identified as female. Up until recently, if you had asked me how my gender relates to my race, I would have said that they were completely separate. But more recently, I've begun to realize that my sense of myself as a woman is very much connected to my blackness. Um, and so, yeah, my race and my gender identity are inextricably linked. Um, at this point, I'm not really capable of articulating why or how or what that means specifically. But yes, it's not just that I identify as a woman and I identify as a black person. I identify as a black woman. I'm queer. That surprises a lot of people because optically I do read as a straight person. I've been in a 22 year monogamous relationship with a cisgender heterosexual man. But if I were to describe the way I, um, the way I experience sexual and romantic attraction, excuse me, in, I'm really attracted to uh, certain personality traits. And um, yeah, if I find someone, if I find someone's personality attractive, you know, in a sexual way, I will then very quickly, you know, develop a sexual attraction to their body, um, regardless of, you know, what their body shape or size is, regardless of what their genitals are, regardless of what their presentation is. Um, and so in that way, I wouldn't really say that I am attracted to a particular gender. I am attracted to specific types of people, personality wise. Um, yeah. So, some people will call that pansexual, but for some reason that word doesn't quite resonate with me. So queer is the best word I can think of to describe my sexual orientation. A lot of people assume that what I do for work is sex therapy, which is a little bit different than uh, being a sex educator. So typically someone will go to a sex therapist when they are having some sort of issue around their sexuality, um, be it, you know, as an individual or possibly in a relationship. And a therapist uh, will really look at what's going on in that person's life, what's going on with them, like personally, what's going on with them emotionally. They will often look at, you know, their past experiences and, you know, try and find connections between those experiences and, um, what the person is experiencing in the moment or the challenges the person's experiencing in the moment. I don't really do that. There's a little bit of counseling in some of what I do, but most of what I do involves giving people information about sexuality 
and then helping them find ways to use that information to make decisions about their sexuality, you know, whether that be their relationships, whether that be their health, whether that be the way they want to communicate um, in a way that works best for them. So I don't really get much into, you know, their past or their psychology. I'm really just there to give them information. My first job as a sex educator was at a store called Venus Envy. It was in Ottawa where I lived for many, many years. And it was a sex positive shop. And so we sold things like, you know, toys and safer sex products and, um, you know, just sensual products and books and movies like DVDs, all sorts of things. But we also offered workshops um, in the evenings. And so I worked in the store and then after I'd been working there for a little while, I started uh, facilitating workshops and, I was having the best time and that really sparked my passion for this, this whole career track that I'm on now. There isn't really a topic I don't like teaching. One of my favorites is consent. I believe that consent is the foundation to pleasurable sexual experiences and that's what I want everyone to have. You can't have a pleasurable experience sexually or really at all if you are doing something you don't really want to be doing. So I really enjoy talking to people about how we can make it easier for everyone to talk to each other about what they want, how we can make it easier for people to be able to, you know, move on and let it go if their partner doesn't want what they want and how to just make sure that, you know, when you both want to be together, you're together in ways that you want to be. Um, I said both, but really both, all, whoever is involved, I just want you all to want to be there and I want you to be doing the things that you're doing so you feel good. So yeah, love consent. Uh, it may sound weird, but I'm really, really fascinated by sexually transmitted infections. Um, I don't have a really extensive medical science background like at all. So I'm really, really intrigued by the way that, you know, bacteria and viruses, you know, get into our systems and then, you know, do what they do, even though what they do is usually kind of icky. And I'm interested in, you know, the way these Infections are treated, um, just all of it, I find really, really fascinating. I'm also really intrigued by gender because growing up, I was told that there were two discrete sets of primary sex characteristics and that that was what determined your gender. And that was very straightforward and easy to comprehend, but it wasn't terribly interesting. Then when I was you know, like a teenager or a young adult, I learned that, hey, sometimes people's genders do not match up with those primary sex characteristics. And I was like, whoa, that's a new and interesting twist to the story. And then as I got older and learned more, I discovered that there were all sorts of variations on uh, the gender binary that I had grown up with. And then I learned that it wasn't a binary and that there were many, many different types of relationships that people could have to their genders and, you know, infinite ways to express those genders and that, you know, gender roles were similarly expansive and diverse and, I love that because it makes people seem far more interesting to me. Those are all the questions I came up with, but it would not be a tag if I did not tag people. So you're it. Eva from What's My Body Doing, Shan Booty, Jalen Ricks, Dr. Risa Weinstein, and Grace Victory. I tag you. Can't wait to hear your answers. If you would like to answer any of these questions because you're also a sex educator or an aspiring sex educator, or you just like answering questions that I made up, um, you can do that down in the comments below. I'd love to learn more about you. That's all for now. Uh, I hope you have a great day and I will see you soon. Bye.